previous classes, we have been learning about the molding sands and their composition. We have also learnt about the core sands and their ingredients. Now, let us learn about the patterns and the allowances. First of all, what is a pattern? Pattern is the principal tool during the casting process. In the uh, one lecture on the tools and terminology, we have seen that the pattern is the model for creating the mould cavity. If we want to make a particular casting, a similar model we will take. This model may be made up of wood, metal or wax and so on. This model will have a similar geometry to that of the casting which we want. Using this model, we create the cavity inside the mould. This model is known as the pattern. It is the replica of the component to be made by the casting process, but not always that the pattern is exactly similar or identical to the cast component which we are going to make. Sometimes there may be little modifications. What are these modifications? Right, we will see. Now, let us see uh, how the pattern looks like. Say, this is the centrifugal pump to be made by casting process, or this is made by casting process, and the pattern is like this. You can see this is the pattern. Now, these are the modifications to the pattern. Pattern is made with some modifications compared to the final cast component. The main modifications to the pattern are pattern allowances and provisions for core prints. What are these allowances? Allowances means some increment or decrement to the dimension, whereas the second modification is the provision for the core prints. In the previous class, we have seen the concept and importance of the core print. The core print is used to support the core. Now, again let us consider the same example which we have seen in the previous class. So, this is the component which we want. This component has an axial hole, right. So, this is the axial hole, this is the side view and yes, so this is the axis of the job. So, to make this component, we have to make this a similar cavity inside the mould. So, naturally one can think that the pattern should be similar to this shape, but here you see this is the pattern. Surprisingly, the pattern, its geometry is different from the geometry of the casting which we want. Why there is a difference? And here we can see some projection is there and here also some projection is there. Why we have kept this projection to the pattern? Because, so this is the mould cavity, this is the mould cavity and this is the core this is the core. So, the molten metal flows around the core and after solidification, we break this core. That is how we get the axial hole in the cast component. Now, the core actually the effective core is, it starts from this point and up to this point. But you, only if we make that much core, how it will be supported? That is the question. So, to support that, we are making, we are extending the core up to here, up to here. So, this is the extended portion of the core. Now, where to place this? Even to place this, so we are making the cavity, an extended cavity is made here and extended cavity is made here. Into that extended cavity, we are placing the extender portion of the core and that is how the core is supported here the extended portion of the core, uh, what is a pattern is known as the core print. Similarly, the extended portion, so this much portion is not part of the effective core. So, this is the core print. So, core print means it is an extra projection on the pattern to create, to enable or to support the core prints or of the core inside the mould cavity. Similarly, it refers to the core print refers to the, the extended portion of the core also. Now, these are the functions of a pattern. It prepares the mould cavity, 
it enables creation of the core prints. So, while we are making the pattern, right? So, these core prints we are now, this uh, core prints we are not making separately. While making the mould itself, the core prints are made. So, the pattern has got the core prints. Next one, it makes provisions for runner, gates and razors. So, uh, we have seen the what say the vertical passes is there initially we pour the molten metal through the sprue, then it passes through the vertical passes, this is known as the sprue, then it passes through the horizontal passes, it is known as the runner. After filling up the mould cavity, it raises through the razor, this is known as the razor. And the pattern should make provision for the runner, ingates and the razor. These are the functions of the pattern. Now, what are the characteristics of a pattern material? Can we choose any material which we find somewhere and make a pattern? Certainly not. The pattern material should have certain characteristics, then only we can choose that material as the our pattern. What are the what is the characteristics of the pattern material? It should be easily worked, shaped and joined. Sometimes the castings may have a complex geometry and we may, we may take a solid block, maybe a wooden block and we must be in a position to make the required complex geometry on the using the pattern material. So, it should be easily worked, shaped and joined. Next one, it should be light in weight. If it is too heavy, handling would be difficult. Next one, it should be strong, hard and durable. Now, what is happening in the molding process? We take the pattern and we put it inside the molding boxes and we put the molding sand and we ram the molding sand. Sometimes we apply excessive pressure and because of that the pattern should not be damaged or it should, what say minute features should not be broken. So, that is why it should be strong, hard and durable. Durable means we must be in a position to use it for making several castings that is the durability. Next one, it should have resistance to wear and abrasion. Right? So, as we keep using it uh, several times, the sand particles come in contact with the uh, what say pattern material and they may cause wear and they may cause abrasion and the what say pattern material should have resistance against the wear and the abrasion. Next one, it should have resistance to corrosion and to other chemical reactions. Now, what we are doing here? We take the pattern put it inside the molding box, then we place the molding sand over the pattern. The molding sand contains moisture, 2 to 5 percent moisture and if the what say pattern is a willing to or it is uh, what say re reacting with the what say moisture, now its shape will be changing, it may swell right or if it is a metallic pattern and it is possible that it may develop corrosion with the moisture, it undergoes corrosion and uh, some other chemical reactions can take place. So, the pattern should have the corrosion resistance and resistance to chemical reactions. Next one, dimensional stable and unaffected by the variations in the temperature and humidity, right. So, maybe during the summer season, right, they may expand or in the winter season, they may contract, but a pattern material that we choose for making the pattern should have the minimum variations in the what say uh, uh, variations in the temperature and humidity. Next one, it may have all the required properties, but it should be available at an affordable price, its price should not be too costly. These are the common pattern materials, right. Some materials are used for making patterns are wood, it is widely used pattern material. Next one, metals and alloys. Next one, plastic and rubbers and finally, wax is also used as the pattern material. Each material has its own advantages, limitations and field of applications. Now, these are the wooden patterns. You can see this is right. So, this is a pump housing, right. So, this is the wooden pattern and this is the core box. Of course, when we make the pattern, 
Now, what is a cavity using this pattern? A hollow cavity is created inside the molding box. Now, we need a hollow space within the housing. So, for that we make a core using this core box and this core will be kept inside the mold cavity. Then we get the hollow housing. So, this is a, a best example of the wooden pattern and there will be plastic patterns also. Yes, this is a plastic pattern for the pump housing and this is the core box and here we make the core right using this pattern we make the mold right and inside the mold cavity we place the score in the correct position then we get the hollow pump housing. These are the types of the patterns right. One is the single piece pattern, second one split or two piece pattern, third one match plate pattern, fourth one gated pattern, fifth one sweep pattern, sixth one loose piece pattern, seventh one skeleton pattern and finally, the eighth one is the cope and drag pattern. Now, let us see all these patterns one by one, how do, do they look like. Now, let us see the first we will see the single piece pattern. See this is the single piece pattern used only in cases where the job is very simple. In such a cases, we use this single piece pattern. See the job is very simple. Now, so this is the what is a best uh, what is a application of the single piece pattern. Now, we want to make a spur gear using the casting process and the pattern will be like this right. So, this single piece will be kept inside the drag box and uh, uh, in that drag box we compact the molding sand afterwards we make the drag box upside down over that we place the cope box and we place the riser pin and sprue pin and again we compact in the cope box. Now, in the case of the single piece pattern the mold cavity is lying only in the drag box. Of course, to get this uh, what is a spur gear inside we have to place the core. So, this is pattern for making the spur gear cavity. So, we have seen the single piece pattern. Now, let us see the split or two piece pattern. Split or two piece pattern is used for making intricate castings. When the cavity cannot be made using the what is a single piece pattern, that time we go for the split or two piece pattern. It is split along the parting surface, means the pattern is made into two halves. One half is uh, uh, what say compacted in the drag box and the other half is compacted in the co box, right. Next one, the two halves, the halves of the pattern must be aligned properly by making the use of the dowel pins. And here we can see this is the casting which we want, of course, this is not the pattern. So, the yes, uh, similar casting we want. Now, suppose if the what say pattern is exactly like this, a single piece pattern, let us assume. Suppose if we put it inside the drag box and compact the molding sand around that, how can we withdraw this? In this kind of case, using the single piece pattern, we cannot withdraw after the compaction. That is why we go for the split pattern or the two piece pattern. Now, the split pattern looks like this. When the casting is like this, the pattern will be like this. So, this is the co pattern and this is the drag pattern. Means, this part will be compacted in the drag and this part will be compacted in the cope. Now, these two halves can be withdrawn from the cope box and the drag box, then the both the boxes will be closed. Now, what happens inside? There will be a shape hollow cavity whose shape is similar to the final cast component which we want. So, that is all about the split piece pattern. So, again here we can see this is the what is a pattern for making a dumbbell. Dumbbell is manufactured by metal casting and here for making the dumbbell a split piece is used. So, this is the cope pattern. So, this is the drag pattern. Now, what happens initially we put the what is a drag pattern in the drag box and we compact the molding sand then we make it upside down. Now, over the drag pattern, we have to carefully place the cope pattern. That time, when we are placing the cope pattern over the drag, drag pattern, there should not be any misalignment. So, to prevent the misalignment, 
we use the double pins. Means in the drag box, there will be some holes will be there and for the uh, what is a cope pattern, there will be pins will be there and we ensure that these pins rest in the holes of the uh, what is a drag pattern, then there would not be any misalignment. So, that is how uh, we make the what is a uh, we align the uh, what is a two pieces in the split pattern. Now, here we can see this is a dumbbell right. So, this is made by casting by using the uh, split pattern or the two piece pattern. So, we have seen the single piece pattern and the split piece pattern. Now, let us see the match plate pattern. Match plate pattern consists of a match plate, it is made up of it is a metallic one, metallic match plate on either side of which each half of the uh, what is a split pattern is fastened. Means here also we use two piece patterns, but the thing is in the case of these uh, what is a split pattern or the two piece pattern, these two pieces are always independent. But here what we do is initially we make two pieces and we take a match plate, match plate, a, a metallic plate, thick metallic plate and at the bottom we fix the drag pattern and on the other side above the plate we fix the cope pattern and they are permanently fastened and we can see here yes this is the match plate and this is the pattern right, this is the cope pattern and this is the drag pattern right and the pattern right these are the metallic patterns not the wooden patterns. Yes, here we can see another example. So, this is the match plate a thick plate and this we can see at the bottom. So, this is the drag off of the pattern and this is the cope off of the pattern and they are fastened to the what say match plate permanently. So, this is the metallic assembly. Now, what happens initially we take the what say drag box and we dump the calculated amount of the molding sand into the drag box and we place the match plate on the drag box. Now, what happens because and we apply pressure on the match plate and the sand inside the drag box will be compacted and it will take the impressions of the drag pattern. After that above the match plate we place the cope box again we place the molding sand and we, we, we place the calculated amount of the molding sand again we compact it. Now, what happens the sand in the what is a cope box will be compacted and it, it takes the shape of the cope pattern. Then these two what is a generally it is a this is done by the machines right. So, some vibrations are given to this match plate then because, because of that because of the vibrations the pattern will be withdrawn from the drag box and also from the cope box. Then these two boxes will be separated the match plate pattern will be separated and it will be kept aside and again the cope box and the drag box will be assembled properly then it is ready for the pouring of the molten metal. That way match plate uh, pattern offers us certain benefits means it is faster. Right. So, there is no question of the misalignment and the, uh, it is used for the bigger castings and here we can see again another match plate pattern. So, this is the match plate and this is the cope pattern and this is the drag pattern right. So, uh, this offers uh, benefits compared to the split pit pattern. So, we have seen these three now let us see the gated pattern. So, the gated pattern looks like this. The gated pattern is used for making very small castings. For example, say in a session say one has to make uh, say some 12 small castings. Means for each casting one has to use two molding boxes and two what say one uh, sprue pin and one razor pin and uh, what say and one has to make the gating system and uh, making the mold for each casting that consumes lot of time pattern withdrawal this takes lot of time. Now, because the castings are very small now the question is why cannot we make several castings in a single mold that is the concept of the gated pattern. Now, we can see here so this is the casting this squared one is the casting and this is one casting this is one casting this is one casting likewise in one molding box we want to make 
12 small castings of same geometry. Now, what happens? We make the pattern in an assembled way, means uh, there is a common sprue is there here, the sprue is perpendicular here, right. So, we pour the molten metal through the common sprue and this horizontal process is known as the runner. There is a common runner, we pour the molten metal here and the molten metal travels like this and it flows into all the what say gates, finally it fills in all the cavities. So, that is the concept of the gated pattern. So, while making the pattern, we make the pattern in an assembled way, means the pattern contains what say for making castings for several small castings, it makes cavity for several castings, small castings. Right? So, this is employed for the small cast, castings only. Next one, the sweep pattern. This is the typical appearance of the sweep pattern, used for large castings of circular sections and symmetrical shapes. Now, sometime back in the bounding sands, we have seen that the loam sands we have seen. Right? It contains excessive of clay and uh, finally, it is uh, what say its nature is different from the green sand. The green sand is sticking, right? Uh, but whereas, uh, but green sand does not look like a paste, whereas the sand used in the while using the sweep pattern looks like a paste, right? So, uh, this paste sand is initially kept inside the molding box. Now, this sweep is a two dimensional pattern, just it is a two, two dimensional pattern. Now, using this sweep, right, initially, right, so we start to keep rotating it, we keep rotating. As we keep rotate this sweep, what happens? A cavity is created inside this loam sand and after the sweep is has gone completely inside, then we stop rotating it, then we withdraw the pattern. Now, an actually what is a symmetrical cavity is created inside the loam sand. Over this, over which we place the cob box, then we pour the molten metal. Now, what is the benefit of this sweep pattern? It is a two dimensional pattern, means uh, the material cost is drastically coming down, even making the what say mold is easier, right. So, uh, this is how we can make the what say mold cavity, right. So, this is the what say unrammed sand, loam sand, right and in, inside there is a spindle, initially we play, there will be a spindle. Now, in the second stage, we attach the sweep pattern. So, this is the sweep pattern. Now, we start rotating it. As we keep rotating that, this loam sand is removed. As the sand is removed, we remove it and it goes inside and inside, finally, a cavity is created. After the creation of the cavity is over, we remove the pattern and we also remove the spindle. Now, this is the complete mold, this is the cavity. Now, into this cavity, we can we can pour the molten metal. Next one, let us see the loose piece pattern. Now, this is the uh, typical appearance of a loose piece pattern. Now, you see the geometry of this pattern uh, casting. So, we want to make a casting of this shape, it, it, it is like this. Certainly, uh, we can use a single piece pattern. Now, we have we have compacted this in a uh, drag box, in the drag box. Of course, initially it is downwards, we place the pattern downwards and over that we place, around that we place the drag box, then we compact the sand, then we make it upside down. Now, we have made it upside down. Now, how to remove the pattern? Now, as we try to remove the pattern, this portion and this portion, they are obstructing the removal or the withdrawal of the pattern. Now, how to overcome this problem? Now, in such a case, we use the loose piece pattern. Loose piece pattern means here we, we can see this is one loose piece and this is one loose piece, right. Uh, yes, uh, uh, they, they will be kept here on this side and the one piece will be kept on this side. Now, uh, keeping these loose pieces close to the pattern, we can what say complete the molding process. After the molding process, is over, now we can see there will be a little tapper will be there here, which will enable easy withdrawal of the main pattern. We remove the main pattern like this. After we remove the or the withdraw the main pattern, this uh, what say this piece 
what say it has to be moved towards left and this piece will come out. This piece will come out when we move left and take it up, upside. What about this piece? We have to move towards right and take it outside. So, when the loose piece pattern is used, so in this kind of situation, we can withdraw it very easily. So, that is the concept of the loose piece pattern. Next one, the skeleton pattern. Skeleton pattern is used for making very huge castings, right. So, if for such huge castings and if we use the what is a solid pattern, it will consume lot of pattern material and the cost of the pattern will go up. Not only that, what say the what say handling of the pattern would be very difficult because it, it will be very heavy, right? It will become very tedious. That is why when we are making a very huge pattern, when we are making a very huge casting, what is important for a pattern? It, its outside feature. What is inside is matter for us. Inside there is material or hollow space or inside there is uh, uh, some other material, it does not matter to us. So, we ensure that the outside surface of the pattern is perfectly made, but inside it is hollow. You can see the uh, other side of the pattern, now here it is hollow, but still it is able to serve our purpose. Using this hollow pattern, we are able to make the cavity, the large cavity. So, when we are able to make the cavity with this what say hollow pattern, why cannot we use this uh, and why should we go for the solid pattern which would be expensive and which would be very difficult to handle. So, that is why in such a case, we use the skeleton pattern. Skeleton pattern means only there is outside feature, inside it is hollow. And here we can see there is another, this is another skeleton pattern. Uh, of course, it has got two halves. And here we can see this is the casting which we want. Now, for making this casting and if we have to make the what is a complete solid wooden pattern, just imagine this casting weighs uh, tons, right? Weight of the casting would be in some tons, maybe 4 or 5 tons. Now, the whole what is a pattern is made up of the solid wood. The weight of the pattern also would be very high and the handling of the pattern would be very difficult. In such a case, we go for the skeleton pattern means only outside, only outwards it is it has got the required features, but inside it is hollow. So, that is the benefit and important feature of the skeleton pattern. Now, here we can see another skeleton pattern, a big casting for a, uh, this is the pattern for a big turbine casing, housing. This is the, uh, yes, uh, turbine housing will be like this. And you can see several people are working around it and you can see the several people and the pattern is so big. Now, for such a, what is a pattern, it is not wise to use the solid pattern. Instead, it would be wise and economical to use the skeleton pattern or the hollow pattern. Finally, let us see the cope and drag pattern. What is cope and drag pattern? Yes, cope and drag pattern, they also enable creation of the what is a runner and the riser. Whereas, in the case of the split piece pattern, what is a single piece pattern, match plate pattern, the creation of this sprue runner, we have to do separately. Whereas, in the case of the cope and drag pattern, creation of the riser, creation of the runner, creation of the ingates, all these features are included in the pattern itself. Means, uh, again we can see here, uh, two patterns are there. So, this is the cope pattern and this is the drag pattern. When we are what say ramming the drag pattern in the drag box, the required features are created in the mold cavity and this is the cope pattern and when we are using this pattern and we are, uh, we will place this inside the cope box and place the molding sand, what happens? Even the uh, riser hole is automatically created. The runner is automatically created, means this reduces the time which we spend for creating the riser and the 
runner. So, that is the benefit of the cope and drag pattern. So, this cope and drag pattern includes the what is a provisions for making riser and runner, sorry uh, right riser and runner. So, we have seen we have seen the different types of the patterns. Now, let us see the pattern allowances. These are the pattern allowances. First of all, what are these allowances? Allowances means some increment or decrement to the dimension. So, this is known as the allowance. So, there are 5 types of allowances are there, shrinkage or contraction allowance, draft or taper allowance, machining or finishing allowance, distortion or camber allowance, finally wrapping allowance. Now, let us see all these allowances one by one. First, let us see the shrinkage or contraction allowance. Now, let us see what happens when we pour the molten metal into the mould cavity. Now, let us see, let us this is the mould cavity. Now, immediately after we pour the molten metal, it looks like this. Maybe after few minutes, what will happen? Maybe if it is the aluminum, right, the melting temperature is 660 degree centigrade, but we pour it at about 750 degree centigrade, right. So, there are two temperatures in the casting. One is the melting temperature at which the melting actually starts, but that is not enough to pour inside the mould cavity. To pour into the mould cavity, we still heat it above the melting point. So, that point, that temperature is known as the pouring temperature, right. Maybe we may pour at 750 degree centigrade. Now, from 750 to 660, it will be, there will be a liquid cooling inside the molten metal. So, because of that, there will be some contraction will be there. You can see, this is the shrinkage. Initially, there is no shrinkage. Why this shrinkage is taking place? Because of the temperature drop from the pouring temperature to the melting temperature. But what happens? Fortunately, we have sufficient molten metal in the riser. So, this molten metal comes and fills this gap, Mo means this shrinkage is compensated by the liquid metal in the riser. Now, what happens? Yes, this uh, what say uh, shrinkage uh, is compensated by the liquid metal in the riser. Now, inside there is solidification and because of that, right, there is again shrinkage. This is known as the solidification shrinkage. And fortunately, again we have sufficient molten metal in the riser. So, the liquid metal in the riser comes and fills this gap. So, this is also what is avoided, right. So, the liquid metal in the riser has compensated so far two shrinkages. One is the liquid shrinkage and another one is the solidification shrinkage. Now, let us come. Now, the casting has finally solidified. Of course, here we can see a solidification in case. Let us assume that it is compensated by the liquid metal has come and it has filled this gap. Now, with the casting is completely solidified at 660 degree centigrade. Now, once it is completely solidified, it cools down from 660 to room temperature may be 30 degrees or 35 degrees. That time what happens? There will be reduction in the size, may be the re reduction in the height, reduction in the diameter or reduction in the width. Now, do you think that the liquid metal in the riser will come and fills this gap? Certainly not, right. So, in this case, the this uh, what say shrink case or this contraction is not compensated by the liquid metal in the riser. Then what happens, right. So, we can see uh, one is the liquid shrink case, it is compensated by the liquid metal in the riser. Next one, solidification shrinkage. This is compensated by the liquid metal in the riser and solid contraction, which starts from the what is a freezing point and ends at the room temperature, ambient temperature, reduction in volume caused when the metal loses the temperature in the solid state. And this reduction, this contraction in the size is not compensated by the liquid metal in the riser. Right? Solid contraction is not compensated by the liquid metal in the riser. What would be the consequence? Consequence? 
size of the casting would become smaller. We might have designed the pattern with um, keeping the what say uh, actual casting size accordingly we have designed the pattern. Now, because of this contraction solid contraction the size of the casting would become smaller which we do not want. Now, how to overcome this problem? Make the dimensions of the pattern little larger so that this extra right. So, that uh, after this contraction solid contraction is over the final size of the casting would be equal to the size of the casting which we want. So, this uh, increment in the uh, what is the size this extra dimension is known as the contraction elements right. So, this is also known as the shrinkage elements right again this is different for different materials. When you are making grey cast iron right. So, up to 610 mm millimeters the shrinkage allowance is 0.01 mm and for the same materials when the dimension is between 610 mm to 1220 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0 0.009 mm and over 1220 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0 0.007 mm. Similarly, when we are making cast steels up to 610 mm the shrinkage or the contraction allowance is 0.021 mm. From 610 mm to 1813 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0.016 mm and over 1830 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0.013 mm. And when we are making aluminum castings up to 1220 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0.013 mm. From 1220 to 1830 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0.012 mm and over 1830 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0.10 mm. And when we are making magnesium castings up to 1220 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0.014 mm. Over 1220 mm the shrinkage allowance is 0.013 mm. So, these are the allowances to be given as the uh, shrinkage or the contraction allowance for the different cast materials. Means, these allowances are to be given to the pattern while designing the pattern. Next one let us see the draft or the taper allowance. What is this draft or taper allowance? right by draft is meant the taper provided on all the vertical surfaces of the pattern. So, that it can be removed from the sand without tearing away the sides of the sand right. When we are withdrawing the pattern the vertical surface of the pattern may tear out the mould cavity because of the friction. So, to avoid that tearing we give a taper. Because of that taper, we can easily withdraw the pattern without causing any damage to the what is a vertical surface of the mould. Here we can see uh, one case. So, this is one case and this is the mould and this is the pattern. And you can see here, this is the vertical portion, vertical element of the pattern and there is no taper. Because of that, after moulding is over and they are trying to withdraw it. Now, what happens? Here, this is the what say vertical surface of the pattern, and this is the vertical surface of the mould cavity. There is a friction between the pattern and the mould cavity surface, and because of that friction, as we are withdrawing, and this what say portion will be damaged or it may be broken. So, this has to be avoided. So, this is a poor design. Now, what happens here? So, this is the pattern, and this is the vertical element of the pattern. Now, a small taper is given to the pattern right. So, what happens with this pattern and when we move what say compact the sand in the drag box right. Now, after the compaction when we try to what say withdraw the pattern the moment we what say push it little upwards already a clearance is created between the this surface of the pattern and the surface of the cavity. Once a small clearance is created further it would not touch then we can easily withdraw the pattern completely. 
that is why when we give the pattern to the vertical surface or the vertical element of the pattern, the withdrawal would be easier. So, this is known as the taper elements and again these are the different what say draft elements for the various cast materials, right. So, this is the uh, pattern material, right and this is the height of the uh, given surface and this is the draft angle, right uh, for external surfaces and this is the draft angle for the internal surfaces. And when the pattern material is wood, right, so when the height of the given surface is 25 mm, right, the draft angle if it is the external it should be 3 degrees and if the draft angle for the internal surfaces it will be 3 degrees, right. From 25 to 25, 50 mm the external draft will be 1.5 degrees, the internal draft will be 2.5 degrees. From 50 to 100 mm or uh, of the what say height of the uh, surface, right, the uh, external draft will be 1 degree, the internal draft will be 1.5 degree. 100 to 200 mm height, the external draft will be 0.75 degree, the internal draft will be 1 degree. From 200 to 800 mm, the external draft will be 0.5 degree, the internal draft will be 1 degree. Now, when the pattern material is metal and plastic, right up to 25 mm, the external draft will be 1.5 degree and the internal draft will be 3 degrees. From 25 to 50 mm height, the external draft will be 1 degree, internal draft will be 2 degrees. From 50 to 100 uh, right, mm height, the external draft will be 0 0.75 degrees and the internal draft will be 1 degree. From 100 to 200 mm height, the external draft will be 0 0.5 degrees and the internal draft will be 1 degree. From 200 to 800 mm height, the external draft will be 0 0.5 degrees, the internal draft will be 0 0.75 degrees. So, these are the different draft elements to be given for the different pattern materials. Next one, machining or the finishing elements, right. First of all, remember that the casting after the solidification is over, it has a poor surface finish. Why? Because we are pouring the molten metal into a mould and this mould is made up of the sand and the sand, right, cavity has a sand grains on the cavity surface and the sand grains will have rough texture and because of the rough texture of the sand grains, even the solidified casting will have the rough texture. So, we have to minimize this uh, rough surface or we have to remove this uh, rough surface. How to do this? By machining. Now, the same problem comes, we have the what is a required geometry of the casting, keeping that in mind, we design the pattern and after the solidification is over, when we machine it, again the, there will be reduction in the final cast component. So, to keep the machining in our mind, we have to give some increment to the pattern's dimensions. So, this is known as the machining or the finishing elements, right. So, again these are the different elements for the various metals, right. When we are making cast iron casting, the what say uh, when the dimension is up to 300 mm, the machining elements should be 3 mm. And for the same material, when the dimension is from 300 to 500 mm, the machining elements is 500, 5 mm and when the dimension is from 500 to 1000 mm, the machining elements is 6.25 mm and when we are making cast steel, when the dimension is up to 150 mm, the machining elements is 3 mm. From 150 to 500 mm dimension, the machining elements is 6.25 mm. From 500 to 1000 mm dimension, the machining elements is 7.5 mm. And when we are making non-ferrous castings up to 200 mm, the machining elements is 2.25 mm. From 200 to 300 mm dimension, the machining elements is 3 mm. From 300 to 1000 mm, the machining elements is 4 mm. Remember that these are the machining elements this much extra increment is to be given to the pattern dimension. 
then only after the machining is over we get the required size of the casting. Now uh, let us see the distortion or the camber elements. What is this distortion or the camber elements? Sometimes castings get distorted during solidification due to their typical shape. Right? Distortion means what is a change of geometry in an irregular fashion. Next one, reasons for distortion, one is the internal stresses and another one is the non-uniform cooling of the casting. When the casting has uh, what is a different sections of different thicknesses, the, there will be non-uniform cool, cooling. Because of that, there will be what is a internal stresses will be developed and there will be uh, what is a distortion. Now we can see this is the required casting, but so here we can see this section is longer and this section is uh, what is a shorter, this has solidified faster and there is a difference in cooling. Finally, after the final solidification, it is bent like this, this is the distortion and this is the required casting, but after solidification, it has bent like this. So, here distortion has taken place. Now, how to overcome this? Me means even when we are designing the pattern, we have to design the, the pattern such that the cavity initially may have a different shape than the actual required casting, but after solidification, because of the distortion, it comes to the required shape. In that way, we have to design the pattern. So, that kind of elements is known as the distortion elements, right? Measures to be taken, uh, right? Providing sufficient machining elements to cover the distortion effect and provide suitable elements on the pattern called camber or distortion elements or the inverse reflection. How to do this? Now, you see here, this is the actual casting and after solidification, it is becoming like this. This is the actual casting and after solidification, it becomes like this. Now, keeping this distortion in our minds, so we are designing the pattern like this. Now, we are designing the pattern like this. Now, you see the what is the shape of the patterns? The shape of the pattern is not similar to the final cast parts, but after solidification, because of the distortion, the shape of the casting will be same as that of the expected casting. So, this is the distortion elements. Next one, the wrapping elements. What is this wrapping elements? So, this wrapping elements is a negative elements, right? We have seen the what is a shrinkage elements, we have seen the machining elements, we have seen the distortion elements. So, these are all the positive elements means because of these factors, we what say give some increment to the pattern dimensions, but this is a negative elements. Why we make what say we make the pattern little smaller than the required one. Why? Because after the compaction is over, we have to withdraw the pattern. For withdrawing the pattern, what we do? We use the draw spike we insert the draw spike into the pattern. Then on all the sides, we strike the draw spike on all the four sides. So that see the mould cavity will be little enlarged and there will be a clearance between the cavity surface and the pattern surface. Then we take the pattern outside. So when, so that what we are doing? We are wrapping the pattern. So we are what is a striking on all the four sides because of that the mould cavity will be enlarged. So, keeping this what is a enlargement in our consideration, we make the pattern little smaller than the what is a as, 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 than the requirement. So, this is the this reduction in the what is a size of the pattern is known as the wrapping elements. And remember that this is a negative elements. Now, this is let us compare different patterns, right? Pattern materials and their performances. Now, uh, we can use wood as the pattern material, aluminum, steel, plastic, and cast iron. They are all these are the what say pattern materials. Now, these are all the characteristics. 
Now, these are all the characteristics of the different pattern materials, right. E means excellent, G means good, F means fair and P means poor. Now, uh, when we use the what say wood as the patterns material, machinability will be excellent, very easily we can machine the pattern uh, material and uh, what say when we use the right similarly, it is uh, for the wood the wear resistance is poor. Next one, its strength is fair and its weight is uh, excellent means easily we can carry that is the meaning. Next one, repairability is excellent corrosion resistance is excellent and swelling is poor, right. Once it comes in contact with the moisture, it swells, that is why its resistance against the swelling is poor. Next one, when we use the aluminum as the pattern material, machinability is good, wear, wear resistance is good, strength is good, weight is good means easily we can carry, that is the meaning. Next one, repairability is poor, corrosion resistance is excellent. Next one, swelling is means resistance against to what say swelling is excellent. Next one, when we use the steel as the pattern material, machinability is fair, wear resistance is excellent, strength is excellent, weight is poor means it is heavy, we can we cannot carry it easily. Next one, repairability good. Next one, corrosion resistance poor. Why? once in con comes in contact with the moisture, right, what happens? It gets corroded. Next one, swelling, there is no swelling. So, that way it has got excellent swell, what say resistance against the swelling. Next one, when we use plastic as the pattern material, machinability is good, wear resistance is fair, strength is good, weight is good, easily we can carry, repairability is fair, corrosion resistance excellent, it does not react with the moisture. Next one, swelling, no swelling. So, on that gun, it has got excellent swelling resistance. Next one, when we use the cast iron as the pattern material, machinability is good, wear resistance is excellent because it has got the higher resistance against the wear. Next one, strength is good, weight is poor, means we cannot carry it easily to different places. That way, it uh, right on that angle, it is poor. Next one, repairability is good, corrosion resistance is poor because once it comes in contact with the moisture, it gets corroded. That is why its resistance against corrosion is poor. Next one, what about resistance against swelling? Excellent. No question of swelling when it, when it comes in contact with the moisture, right. So, these are the different pattern material characteristics. Friends, in this lecture, we have seen the pattern and the purpose of the pattern we have seen, right, and the different types of the patterns we have learned and different pattern allowances to be given and we have seen and different pattern materials also we have seen and finally, we have learned the, the performances of the different pattern materials we have seen. So, we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.